Uh, I was asked to speak about uh, research and particularly how it fits into our work in terms of becoming an evidence-based discipline. And so I'd like to uh, talk to you this morning about uh, applying the research knowledge base about what we know and uh, more importantly about trying to improve outcomes using technology uh, for students who struggle in reading and learning. Uh, I will do my best to, um, to make it less technical than if this was a college class. So uh, uh, we, we generally talk about uh, two ways of thinking about research, uh, being a producer of research versus being a consumer of research. And uh, so for this morning's talk, uh, I'm going to take the, the approach that we're consumers of research and we'll, uh, in many cases, try to sidestep some of the, uh, the technical aspects. Um, in certain parts, we'll, we'll uh, dwell down into some of the, the, the technical content just to give you the background. But uh, my goal uh, before we're done here uh, for morning tea is to give you some licenses about uh, what the research says. Uh, so that you are emboldened about um, changes you'd like to make that have solid research backing, but also to give you a license to challenge uh, when we want to do innovative things and the research base isn't quite there. And so I want to give you some approaches on how you, you might do that. Um, I want to give you a little bit of background about my work. I mean, Greg did a very nice introduction, so I, I'm not going to dwell on this, but uh, the book that he was talking about uh, is um, was created... Uh, by myself and two other journal editors. And selfishly, we wanted all this information on our, our desktop because we would get manuscripts and we'd need to look things up. And we'd like, wouldn't it be nice if we just had it in one volume? So we contacted 80 of our friends and the result was about a 900 page book. Uh, there's two available for door prizes. Um, my pity to you if you win one, um, uh, airport security likes to check your bag. Uh, it's so thick, it, the, the x-ray can't get through, so they think you're hiding something inside. So um, <laughs> uh, at university, people that use this, I, I consider that a, an abuse of students when you require a 900-page book to be read during the semester. Uh, but, but if any of you are involved in uh, grant writing, it, it pays for itself in one day in terms of having ready reference. We asked each author to tell us not only what we do know, but what we don't know. And as you know, writing a grant proposal, it's very helpful to say, you know, certain authors said we need more research on this topic. So uh, anyway, uh, that may be of interest to you. Uh, Greg also mentioned my current work with JRTE, the Journal of Research on Technology and Education. That's ISTE's research journal. It's an international journal. It comes out four times a year. And then uh, I think the other reason I came up on Greg's radar is uh, for many years I've published something um, talking about uh, what we learned last year. Um, I created a, a new research methodology called um, the year in review. And, and I was very envious of fields like psychology and reading that had textbooks and reference books that summarized the research, where in the area of special education technology, we can't typically go to one place uh, before the handbook was published to find all the, the research. And so what I started doing, um, I, I think this we're heading into winter season here in Australia. Uh, our winter is a little different, and so um, I spend my winter um, at the library, and, and I scan um, the contents of 31 journals, and then I look for articles that people like you and me might like to read, and then I copy them and take them home and read them, and then I write an article about that, and so this year in review article is, is a summary, and so I like to tell people, if you only want to read one article a year, I'd like it to be mine. No, um, if you only read one article a year, I'd like it to be this one, because what I've done is I've summarized everything that was published last year. And the idea then is that you could use the tables to say, okay, I'm looking for a child that uses a single switch uh, with autism. And then we could find out, is there an article like that out there? And it covers both research and practice, which will be another finding that we have. So um, the conclusion of all this is I tend to read a little bit of research. Do I have any credibility on that yet? Okay. All right. Well, to tell you what, let me kind of launch into some things about the, the urgency and... Um, um, what I have here is uh, four graphs of data, and um, it, it wouldn't be a good research session if we didn't show data. Um, what I'd like you to do is to look at this. Let me explain. What you see on the uh, vertical axis is a score between 0 and 100%. And so these are four students that are performing in an algebra class. And let's look at, at D's performance. Uh, as a teacher, would you have any concern about D? Actually, he'll probably be in your face because you had a tricky question. He missed one all week, and he's very upset, very upset. But, but typically, a teacher would be very gratified with a student like D that he's doing very well. On